This is Concept E Classes and today we will deal with the question and answers of Chapter 17 in Class 8 Science, Stars and the Solar System. So before we enter into the exercises, let's take a quick revision of what all we have studied in this chapter. First we saw what are celestial objects and we learned about some of these objects like the moon. In the topic moon, we studied about the phases of the moon and about the surface of the moon. Then we studied about stars and then constellations and then we briefly understood about four major constellations namely the Big Dipper, the Orion, the Cassiopeia and Leo Major. Then we dealt about the solar system, about the suns and the planets and some other members of the solar system like asteroids, comets, meteorites and artificial satellites. Now let's begin the exercises. Exercises. Question number one. Choose the correct answer. Which of the following is not a member of the solar system? A. An asteroid. B. A satellite. C. A constellation. And D. A comet. Which of the following is not a member? It is a constellation. We know that the asteroids, satellites, comets, and planets, the sun, they all form the solar system. Question number two. Choose the correct answer. Which of the following is not a planet of the sun? A. Sirius. B. Mercury. C. Saturn. D. Earth. So we know that Mercury, Saturn and Earth are the planets of the Sun except for Sirius which is the brightest star in the sky. Question number 3. Choose the correct answer. The phases of the moon occur because A. We can only see that part of the moon which reflects light towards us. B. Our distance from the moon keeps changing. C. The shadow of the Earth covers only a part of the moon's surface. D. The thickness of the moon atmosphere is not constant. We have already studied that the moon is a non-luminous object and it does not produce its own light. We can see the moon only because it reflects the light which falls on it from the sun. Hence the option is A. The phases of the moon occur because we can see only that part of the moon which reflects the light towards us. Question number 4. Fill in the blanks. A. The planet which is farthest from the sun is Neptune. B. The planet which appears reddish in color is, which is a planet which is red in color? Mars. C. A group of stars that form a pattern in the sky is called as a constellation. We have already studied that a constellation is a group of stars that has a recognizable shape or a pattern. D. A celestial body that revolves around a planet is known as a satellite. E. Shooting stars are actually not dash, are not stars. We know that the shooting stars are actually meteors. Meteors are small pieces of the dust or debris that occasionally enter into the Earth's atmosphere. They are not stars. F. Asteroids are found between the orbits of dash and dash. We already studied that there is a large gap between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter and that gap is occupied by a large number of rocky objects called as asteroids which revolve around the sun. Question number 5. Mark the following statements as true, t or false, f. So we have to mark true and false. A. Pole star is a member of the solar system. Is it true or false? It is false because pole star is not a member of the solar system. B. Mercury is the smallest planet of the solar system. True. Uranus is the farthest planet of the solar system. Is it? No. It is false. Neptune is the farthest planet of the solar system. Insat is an artificial satellite. True. E. There are nine planets in the solar system. False. How many planets do we have? We have only eight planets in the solar system. Till 2006, there were nine planets and Pluto was the farthest planet. But in 2006, the IAU adopted a new definition of a planet and Pluto does not fit the definition. Hence, there are only 8 planets in the solar system. F. Constellation Orion can be only seen with the help of telescope. Answer is false. Actually, the constellation Orion is one of the most magnificent constellation that can be visible with our naked eyes and they can be seen during winter in the late evenings. Hence, the answer is false. Question number 6. Match the items in column A with one or more items in column B. 
So in column A we have inner planets, outer planets, constellations in satellite and in column B we have Saturn, Pole Star, Great Bear, Moon, Earth, Orion and Mars. So let's match the following. Inner planets, what all are the inner planets? We have Earth and Mars. Outer planets, we have Saturn. Constellation, we have Great Bear or Big Dipper and one more constellation is in B which is Orion. And the satellite of Earth is Moon. In which part can you find Venus if it is visible as an evening star? In which part? Venus appears in the western sky just after the sunset and thus it is called as an evening star. We have already studied that Venus appears sometimes in the eastern sky uh, before the sunrise and sometimes in the western sky just after the sunset. That is why it is called as a morning star or an evening star. So this is an image of the Venus that appears in the western sky just after the sunset. Question number 8. Name the largest planet of the solar system. Which is the largest planet? Jupiter is the largest planet of the solar system. It is so large that about 1300 Earth can be placed inside this giant planet. Question number 9. What is a constellation? Name any two constellations. The stars forming a group that has a recognizable shape or a pattern is called as a constellation. And the shape of the constellation, they resemble objects familiar to us. Some of the constellations that can be observed in the night sky are the Ursa Major, Orion, Cassiopeia and Leo Major. Question number 10. Draw the sketches to show the relative position of the prominent stars in A. Ursa Major and B. Orion. So we have to draw the two constellations showing the relative positions of the bright stars in these two constellations. So the first one is Ursa Major. Now the Ursa Major is one of the most common and famous constellation which can be seen during summer time in the early part of the night. It is also known as Big Dipper and or Great Bear and there are seven prominent stars in this constellation. It appears like a big ladle uh, with three stars in its handle and four stars in its bowl. Now Orion is uh, one of the magnificent constellations that can be seen during winter in the late evening. It has about 7 to 8 bright stars. It is also called as Hunter. Three middle stars, it represents the belt of the Hunter and the four or five bright stars, they form a quadrilateral. Question number 11. Name two objects other than the planets which are a member of the solar system. We know that other than the planets and the sun, there are a large number of bodies that revolve around the sun. So some of these members are the asteroids, comets, meteors, meteorites and artificial satellites. Question number 12. Explain how you can locate the pole star with the help of the Ursa Major. We can locate the pole star with the help of the Ursa Major by the following activity. First we have to observe the northern sky and identify the Ursa Major. Then look at the two stars at the end of the Ursa Major. Okay. Now imagine a straight line passing through these stars as shown in the figure. Now extend the imaginary line towards the north. This line will lead to the star which is not too bright and that is the pole star. So this is how we can locate the pole star with the help of Ursa Major or Big Dipper. Question number 13. Do all the stars in the sky move? Explain. Do the stars move? No, the stars do not move in the sky. They just appear to move. Since the earth rotates from west to east, the stars appear to move from east to west. Just like when we are moving in a train, the nearby trees and buildings, they appear to move in the backward direction. Similarly, the stars, they appear to move from east to west as the earth rotates from west to east. Except for pole star. Pole star, it does not appear to move. We have explained more about this pole star in the first video of this chapter. If you have any doubts, please refer the corresponding slides. Question number 14. Why is the distance between the stars expressed in light years? What do you understand by the statement that the star is 8 light years away from the earth? So first let's answer the first question which is why is the distance between the stars expressed in light years? Now the distance between the stars or the distance between the stars and the earth are very large. For example the sun. It is nearly 150 million kilometer away from the earth. 
hence it is inconvenient to express this distance in kilometer so such large distances is expressed in another unit known as light year a light year is a distance traveled by light in one year now the next part now if a star is 8 light years away from the earth it means that the light from the star will reach the earth in 8 years now we know that the speed of light is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second now light year is a distance traveled by light in 1 year so the time is 1 year it is 365 days if we convert it into hours we have 365 into 24 hours which is 31536000 seconds so let's now calculate the light year now a light year is a distance traveled by light in 1 year then the distance is equal to speed into time speed of the light is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second the time taken for the light is 31536000 hence we'll get this number into 10 raised to 8 meter and we are converting it into kilometer by dividing it by 1000 hence we'll get 9.4 608 into 10 raised to 12 kilometer. Now, if the star is located 8 light years away from the Earth, then the distance between the star and the Earth is 8 light years. Now, one light year is 9.4608 into 10 raised to 12. Therefore, we multiply it by 8, and we'll get 7.577 into 10 raised to 13 kilometer. Question number 15. The radius of Jupiter is 11 times the radius of the Earth. calculate the ratio of the volumes of jupiter and earth and how many earth can jupiter accommodate so first we have to calculate the ratio of the volumes of jupiter and earth so for that let's first take the radius of earth as r now the volume of the earth or the, the planets are considered to be a sphere so the volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube where r is the radius of the earth now it's given that the radius of jupiter is 11 times the radius of the earth hence the radius of the jupiter is 11r therefore the volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube the radius of the jupiter is 11r therefore 11r cube so to calculate the ratio of the volumes of jupiter and earth we divide them both volume of jupiter by volume of earth which is equal to 4 by 3 pi 11r cube by 4 by 3 pi r cube now 4 by 3 pi r cube is common so we take it out into 11 cube so we can cancel this two and we'll get 11 cube which is equal to 1331 therefore the ratio of the volumes of jupiter and earth is 1331 s to 1 hence jupiter can accommodate 1331 earths in it question number 16 boju made the following sketch this one of the solar system is the sketch correct if not correct it So if you see here we can see that we have sun then we have mercury then mars earth venus jupiter asteroid belt is between jupiter and saturn neptune and finally uranus so is the sketch correct no this is a correct sketch so what is the problem in the sketch the order of the planets are not in order it should be actually mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune so here the position of the Mars and Venus are interchanged, and also the Neptune and Uranus. And the asteroid belt it is between Mars and Jupiter. It is not in between Jupiter and Saturn. Hence, the sketch is not correct. So that's all for the question and answers of chapter 17. Tune in soon for the next session. Don't forget to share and like and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care and bye bye.